to read one verse and I'm going to preach. Uh, I'm going to start preaching from that verse and I'm, I got some text to work today, all right? All right. I'm going to Jeremiah chapter number 29, a very familiar passage of scripture, and I'm only reading one verse. Verse number 11. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Yours, you may have the King James or some other version, but it will be close, but just follow along with me. It says, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, mm -hmm. and not for evil, right. to give you hope in your final outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it also says in the King James, to give you an expected end. Uh, on your way down, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord, but for just a few moments, I'm going to preach on the subject, I'm getting ready for better. Yeah. 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 Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm getting ready. Oh, y'all not saying with no conviction. Say, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. For better. For better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready for better. I'm getting ready for better. Now, when I think about this, I was thinking this morning about businesses and when businesses have events or when people have events. And one of the things that they do to, to have an event is they do what you call planning. They plan for the event. Yes. They put together their budget. They put together the staff that they need. They plan out who they need to work the event. Come on, come mm -hmm. on, come on. And so when they plan it, they also plan their location. They plan everything that they can possibly plan for their event. Mm -hmm. Then the next word I want to talk to you about is the word execution. Execution is the place where you now take the things that you have planned and put them in motion. Mm. And one thing I found out about planning and execution, there's always a disparity in the place of planning versus execution. Can I get a witness up in here? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. No matter how well you plan, no matter how well you try to put some things together, one reality is there will always be stuff that comes up that is unexpected that you did not plan for. Yeah. And so, in the between the planning and the execution, we find some disparities. And so, what we find out then is after the event is over, or you know, let me back up and say this: not only do we deal with the fact that there is some disparity, make sure the camera's on. Uh, we, not only do we deal with disparities of things that we did not have that happened that were unexpected, but there were some things that we didn't think of. Yeah, yeah, that's right. As much as you try to put it all together, there's some stuff that you didn't think of in the course of a day. No. And so in that situation, after everything is said and done, what the plan is and the execution, after it's over and you realize that some things came up short, they have what's called a debriefing. Come on, come on. Y'all gonna talk to me here today, huh? Yeah, yeah. They have what's called a debriefing. Yeah. Now, what a debriefing is, is when they sit down together and they begin to talk about everything that went well versus everything that went not so well. Yeah. Uh, and the problem with some of them is, and sometimes in business, is we spend so much time thinking about all the stuff that went well that we ignore the stuff that didn't go so well. Yeah, yeah. The reason, and, and, and let me just relate that to our everyday lives. Oh, in our everyday lives, we, we plan, you know, and I'm saying this because we're coming up on a brand new year. And I know that there are people sitting in this room that one of the things that we tend to do is leading into a new year, we try to make plans. Yeah, yeah. You, you put together what you want your year to look like. Now, it's a dangerous thing. Let me just give somebody a word right here. It's a dangerous thing to say you've got a plan, but you've not written it down. Because if you don't have it written down, you don't have a roadmap to follow as the year goes along. Because one thing about the fact that we are human is that when you go through enough in your life and things happen in everyday life, you will forget some of your plans from day to day. Yeah, yeah. That's a reality. It's not that you're a bad person, but just in the course of doing your day-to-day -day stuff, you end up forgetting some of the stuff that goes in your that you plan for your life. So when you get about, you start off in January and you're going good on your little diet, but by the time you get down to 
about March, April, or May, something about what you had planned has now fallen off because you did not write it down. Mm -hmm. So it is imperative that when you're making plans, I'm talking to somebody, I'm preparing for... Oh, y'all got to talk to me. I'm preparing for better. If you're going to prepare for better, part of preparing for better is your plan. Yeah, yeah. That's it. All right. Come on, man. So I'm saying to you today, by the word of the Lord, that you should write down the things that God has placed on your heart. I'm not just talking about spiritual things, because you know one of the things we try to do, we try to be deep and spiritual. That's right. So we say, oh, I want to do this in ministry, and I want to do that. And I'm not telling you not to prepare for ministry, but you've got to prepare for everyday life also. Yeah, yeah. So you need to be writing down your plans. Mm. That's right. And so while you're planning things, you got to put together, watch this, there are some people who are skilled at certain things, and there are some people who are not. There are some people who are benefits and some people who are liabilities. And what you learn to do is you learn who you can lean on and who you can't lean on. You learn who you can depend on and who you can't depend on. Ah, so now when you plan, when you plan, when you plan, and when you get to, let me jump down to debrief one more time. When you debrief, you look back over the event that you just had. You find out who your greatest assets were and your liabilities were. You find out who your assets were. Who were the people that were most helpful and who were the people who were the most destructive to your life? So when you get ready to move into your next event, you know who to use in the first part and you know who not to use. Because you remember who your assets and your liabilities were. And here we are. Can I preach like I feel it today, y'all? Here we are in the end of 2015, getting ready to shift over into a brand new year. And I was sitting there yesterday and I began to do a debriefing in my own life. I began to look at not just the assets and liabilities of other folk, but like Bishop said, I had to stop and take a look at me. Some things. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Yeah. Some 
sometimes there's some stuff I don't feel like doing. And because I don't feel like doing it, I procrastinate from doing it. Debrief. Can I talk real in here today? Sometimes I don't feel like being bothered with folks, so when my phone rings, I don't answer my phone. And then if they have the nerve to question me about why I didn't answer my phone, I got the nerve to stand back and say, I pay this bill. Who do you think you're talking to? Now, I'm not talking about when you take time and just take a break. I'm talking about when you call up in your feelings and call up in your emotions. And because you call up in yourself that day, you shut everything down and everybody off. And you got an attitude problem. Like for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the feelings you need to look forward, do not point, do not pass go. <laughs> but if we all be honest, we all have those days where we really just don't feel like being bothered. Now the question is when we start acting like that, how are we representing God in our behavior? Things, but now make plans for what's 
next? Yes. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to make plans for what's next in your life. Yes. You need to make plans for what's next in your life. You need to make plans for what I know I'm hearing God right now. You need to make plans for what's next in your life. Yes, you made it through. Yes, you reached a conclusion. But now, God, what is? Ah. Jesus. Yes. The reason, oh Jesus, I hear the Holy Ghost. The reason why some of you are still stuck where you've always been is because you never took the time to realize that next was coming. And you never took the time to examine what next was going to be like. Yes. Oh, I hear God. Some of you were too afraid that if you start planning for next, that you've always been disappointed all of your life. So ain't no use in me sitting down trying to plan for anything. Ain't no use in me trying to make anything happen. Because every time I start to do something, all I get is disappointed. So I might as well just keep things the way they are and just keep going with status quo. If that's where you want to live next year, well, baby. Anointing. 
Are you tell me I don't want to go to church today. Somebody, the Bible, I'm giving you the Bible, am I not? The Bible says confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. The reason why I need you and you need me is so that we can be healing to one another. But see, the oh, I need to work right here for just a minute. One of the problems we got in church is when we start talking about what my faults are and what your faults are, people are not loyal enough to protect you. They rather go tell your stuff.
you to know is that when God starts talking to you, he's not going to talk to you in a language that's right where you are right now. God says, I'm going to start talking to you in a language that's bigger than you. Yes, he's going to start talking to you in a language that is beyond your imagination. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think.
For my now. Yes. Give me. Okay. See. Give us this day. Yes. Uh -huh. This day. This. This. This day. This day. This day. Yeah. My daily bread. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Give us this day. See, too many of us talking about, I want, I want everything God has for me. Uh-huh. I do. Yes. But in the timing that I'm supposed to have. Yes. 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 Because if you get it too soon, yes. you'll be like a problem. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. And you'll make a mess. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. So God, give me what I'm supposed to have right now. Yes. But Lord, help me be prepared. Yes. To receive. Yes. Many of us are not prepared for what's next. Yes. Right. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. What would you do? What is your plan? You know why some of you ain't got your million dollars yet, or even your ten thousand, because you ain't wrote the plan down for what you're gonna do with the ten thousand. No, come on, come on. Carl, sit up. What would you do? What would you do if you had 10000 right now? See, we had it in our minds. But now, have we put the plan on paper? Because if you have the plan on paper, then you can execute it better. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Watch this. I'm done. But well, watch this. Here's what's so amazing. God never ordained the plan to happen by yourself. That's right. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And this year, you got to ask God, send me the right people to help execute. That's right. yes. Yes. Amen. Send me people who will help me to execute the plan. I don't want people who can't help me. That's right. And who I can't be a help to. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, Jesus. Can I tell you something? Sometimes, I, I found this out yesterday in my debrief. I found this out. Sometimes kindness can be your blessing and your curse. Mm -hmm. That's right. My God. Yes. Sometimes, Christian, your kindness can be both your blessing and your curse. Yes. Yes. Why? What do you mean, Elder? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It's simple, saints. Because sometimes in your kindness, people can start to feel codependent on you. That's right. Yes. 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 That's right. Amen. And put you in the place of being their rescuer. That's right. Yes. That's, yes. Right. That's right. And ultimately right. put you in the place of being God. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. oh. I am not your God. That's right. <laughs> when I get in God's way in your life, I get in trouble. That's right. So sometimes in this year coming, there's some people you're going to have to tell them no. That's right. It's okay. Say no. It's a complete sentence. No. Sometimes you have to say no. no. They may not like you. They may get mad. Yes. But that's all right. That's right. Say no. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Because you know what? Some people will never find God depending on you That's to right. be God. That's mm. right. That's true. Mm. And then listen, you put yourself under undue stress trying to take care of grown folks who need to be taking care of themselves. Say it. Say it. Yes. Now don't holler back at me and say preach if you're not going to follow through. Preach. 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 <laughs> If you're not going to follow through yes. and the fault that you need to disconnect and let God be their God, yes. Yes, yes. don't holler back at me right now because it's not doing you any good. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. I said we're sick because mm -hmm. we now depend on people mm -hmm. to validate us That's that we're right. doing a good job. Yes. <laughs> approval, right? We need their approval. Thank you, Mom. We need their approval. Uh -huh. oh, because, you know, the moment you tell somebody no, they're not going to approve anymore. That's, that's right. And if you're not healthy in your spirit and in your emotions, you will find yourself in a bad place. Because you will always be trying to, you will go out of your way. You will go out of your way trying to take care of them. Yes, sir. When they need to be taken care of themselves. That's right. Amen. 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 That's real. I'm, I'm closing, but I need to make sure I needed to make sure everybody heard that today. Yes, sir. Because you can't carry excess. Bishop said you can't carry excess weight into your new year. That's right. Right. I'm preparing 
For what? Better. 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 If you don't do anything else, those that have got things, well, just go on your page and say, I'm preparing for better. Yes. Yes. You might not be able to talk to some folk this week. You might have to shut down for a while while you make your preparations for better. Because let me tell you this. You can't have everybody in your ear when you're making preparation yeah, for better. Right. No. Mm. Listen to this. When it comes to you and who you are, you are the CEO of your life. Mm -hmm. Under God, of course. Yes. Amen. Under God. You are the CEO of your life. The CEO is the one who has the vision. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The CEO is the one who lays out, okay, we need to put this in. I want the company to go here, here, and here. Now, he may relay it to the other folk that are under him, and they have to come up with the plans to make that happen, but the CEO is the one that comes with the original vision. Yes, right. mm -hmm. So why are you letting people who are less than you put vision in your head? <laughs> when you let other people frame your world, they will always frame it too small. Uh -huh. That's right. Hey, you got that. That's true. That's true. They always want to keep you locked in That's to where head. they are. Yeah. Yeah. greatness on the inside of you. I see something wonderful in your life. But the truth of the matter is, through all the greatness that they say they see in you, let them frame your world. They will never frame you beyond anything that they can imagine or dream. Ah, right. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just give it to you in a natural sense. You see Fortune 500. They see $10,000 company. Yeah. And 10000 might be bigger than where you are right now, so yeah. you think, oh, that's a good idea. Let me go for 10000 Let me be a $10,000 company. No. That's not who you're designed to be. Yeah. You got to put your plan in place to be the Fortune 500 that God has shown you. Yeah. Amen. And I, I use that from a natural sense, but think about whatever area of your life this, this could be that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And know this. Your day has come. Yes, yes. Your time is here. Yes. Last week I preached a revival called Thrive. And I told the people, I said, let me tell you something. Thriving does not come without four things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come without controversy. That means from the outside, people aren't going to like what you do. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not going to come without conflict. Mm -hmm. That means on the inside, you've got to deal with the process of becoming who you're becoming. Yes. Y'all do know that there's a process, right? Amen. You do understand that when, when you start to evolve into who you're becoming, you're going to have a fight on the inside from who you're used to being and who you're trying to become. Yes. There will be a fight. Yes, it It'll be an internal conflict. Hmm. Number three, it won't come without questions. Mm -hmm. won't come without controversy, conflict, questions. What's the question? I talked about merit. How will this thing be? Yeah, yeah. Can I tell y'all a secret? The how is not your concern. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. The how is not, how God's going to do it in your life is not your concern. That's right. All right. Just know he's going to. Yes. And then lastly, it won't come without commitment. Yes. That's right. Because after the debrief, uh -huh. and, and this is a three part cycle, it just keeps happening. Debrief, planning, execution. Debrief, planning, execution. It really starts with planning, execution, debrief, but it can go in any, any one of those. But here it is. In your execution, there must be commitment. Whatever you start off with, you've got to be committed to it. Are y'all hearing me today? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. This year, don't get motivated. Don't get go get empowered. And then turn right back around. And for a few weeks, you're feeling real good about, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And then you drop off. Mm -hmm. you got to be committed to the thing until the end. Mm -hmm. Joseph and Mary were committed to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, Bible. Come yeah. on, Bible. They were committed to Jesus until when? The end. Amen. To the point where To the point where Mary finally couldn't protect him yes. anymore. She stood there at the base of that cross mm -hmm. looking up at her son. Mm. But she was committed. She was so committed that even after he died, 
the glory of God. Right. And after he got up, she was still one of the folk that believed in him. Amen. What am I telling you? You've got to be committed to whatever God is causing you to execute. If you're working on your credit this year, work it to the end. That's right. Don't quit. Don't get lazy and just start spending because you want to spend. Please talk to me. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I need you to hear this because the only way you're going to thrive in this coming year don't go, and even our teenagers, don't go spending money just because you got money. Mm. Learn how to invest money. Yes. It'd be better for you to own the company than for you to be wearing the company. That's right. <laughs> yes. 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 That's right. There's a young boy right now, if you go look it up on Google, it, there's a young boy right now who owns quite a few shares of Nike, y'all. Mm. He's like 15 years old and owns shares of Nike. Because his mama told him, and he actually not just owns shares of Nike, but other companies as well. He actually has stocks. I'm going to put it on the, on the Kingdom Life Facebook. I'm going to go find it today and put it on the Kingdom Life Facebook page. So those of y'all that can go, go look at it. You'll see it for yourself. But this boy actually owns shares of company because his mama told him, baby, you can wear them on your feet, but they wear out. No. But if you own it. Yeah. You own it. It pays dividends. Yeah. Those Nikes on your feet don't pay dividends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the truth of the matter is, owning a part of the company pays dividends. Yes, this little boy learned how to read the stocks and things like that so he could make money. He's making money right now. His portfolio and his money, his net worth is bigger than some of us, than most of us sitting here right now. All right. At 15 years old. 15. Mm -hmm. But that's because I'm, I'm trying to quit you. I got to quit. I got to quit. But that's because, especially, especially among African Americans, we are taught to be consumers, and we're taught the thing of instant gratification. And until we come to grips with sometimes we got to make sacrifices to get what we want in the long run. We'll keep buying and buying and buying and we'll be the greatest consumers and be in the greatest of debt. Yes, yes. That's the reality. Some of us this year need to come on out of debt. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. 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 I'm done. Is there anybody that needs prayer this morning? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. I just hope oh, this is the last Sunday in the in the year. Mm -hmm. And I just think Bishop and you and First Lady to just to lay hands on me and 